And just so you know, uh, we will be recording uh, this webinar as a resource for uh, the Portland Metro STEM partnership. So I uh, always wanna uh, say that outright. And those links is the idea capture tool. Might be used to that by now, but if we do. You are mute, Brad. I was just mentioning that the idea capture tool, we're using it for attendance. And it's also just a chance for you to let each other I think uh, Bradford's internet dropped out. So uh, we're using the idea capture tool there. Um, and it's just a, a place where we can uh, take attendance and uh, also so you get a chance to catch in, check in with others uh, around you. Specifically on number four there, the idea for number four was uh, that you are uh, just trying to get some feedback or trying to hear what other people are doing for um, uh, anything related to what you're, what you're teaching. So specifically like, our question was if, if you're transitioning to maybe a hybrid model, who, who knows what different districts are, are doing, um, can you use that? Uh, maybe that's a, something that you want feedback on. Bradford, you cut out there for a second, but you didn't lose the uh, screen share, so. Yeah, good, thanks. I, sorry about that. And I'll post in the chat one more time here, the. Um, the links for today, you'll see that several times if you're already in. Uh, the first is to uh, the priority, the activities for the prioritized learning targets that are remaining, and then the agenda for today, and then that idea capture tool. And as Bradford said earlier, we will be using the idea capture tool for attendance. So if you um, just want to scroll down and find a place to put your name there. And once you finish, if you want to read other people's questions for, that's them asking for feedback. So if you have some feedback to give them, that's probably appreciated. Probably about just 60 seconds from starting up fully. Are you in class? Sorry about that. No problem. Welcome. We are probably just 20 seconds from starting, but I'll just try to say everything quick from the top. If you could, um, uh, we'll put some links back up, maybe paste those one last time. And then uh, in the idea capture tool, please do make sure you click here to add your name. We're using that for the attendance. And then uh, with this last couple 10 seconds, if you uh, want to take a peek at you know, just where, where other people are at, people are always kind of curious. And, you know, I just put it out there that um, we've just seen it too often that you feel pressured by that or something like that. And that uh, I don't think, you know, people are really in different contexts and situations. So with that, uh, also number four is a request from people to get a little bit of feedback. So if you have time to look at that, but I think we'll get started and it's, we're not gonna dive right in. So we got a couple more things to say, but we'll, we'll get going. Just a quick introductions, Bradford Hill, science and engineering teacher at Mountainside High School. And I'm uh, Matt McCollum. I teach uh, science, physics and IB physics at Mountainside as well. And uh, as, as so often is the case with these webinars, really the two big goals is that overview. It's a little different because uh, we're not called this a unit and uh, we'll say more about that, but really the overview of the prioritized remaining learning targets. And then secondly, to 
preserve that structure though to um, dive into one of the activities. And today will be a little different in that we'll uh, open it up to any activity and we'll open up the rooms and you'll be able to choose which activity to dive into. And so uh, just, you know, a couple notes that we do, I think wanna just acknowledge and, and, and let you know that you have this, what what's resources are here for you. So uh, these are meant to be largely independent, right? So there's not gonna be this overarching storyline, a learning progression that goes from each one. And really there was two motivations behind that. One is um, people just have limited time. So there's this prioritization of which learning targets you might want and it might be different for different people. And then there might be this need to balance assessment types. And you'll see that some are labs, some are more knowledge based. So th with that remaining time that people have, you might pick and choose differently. And then uh, I want to make the comment about the perceived time constraints, both what I've already mentioned with time, people not, lots of people said they're not going to have time for a full unit or even just looking at what they need to do with unit six to finish that. And then uh, will you add more? And then there's also the time constraint on the side of the physics council that really uh, led to what I, to, to be frank is just led to departure from our design principles. And we'll be explicit about that. We'll try to um, let you know what resources are there and what what's going on. And then uh, just to be, we, we want to just explicitly acknowledge, and again, we'll, we'll call it out in the activities too, but some of these have not been tried with students. So we want that to be upfront. And that is different than a lot of the essentially all the other materials that we present. So uh, it's just the context and the situation that we're in that we felt that had to be acknowledged. Matt, I didn't know if, too, if there was anything I missed or um, to add. No, I, I, I don't know. Maybe we skipped the slide about, uh, is the next slide for uh, chat versus? Yeah. Question. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I just wanted to also say when you have questions, um, if you put them in the idea capture tool, that would be helpful for us to document where those questions are uh, will live. Um, those will be that'll be in the parking lot there, uh, and we'll answer that when either during during the session or uh, more likely when you go into to your uh, choice breakout room. Um, and then if you have questions for the par participants that other participants might uh, answer, put those in the chat uh, as it's harder for us to, to monitor there. All right, so I will jump to the agenda then and just kind of try to give that overview. Uh, again, just that introduction, the idea capture tool, again, at the top is questions for us. And then uh, uh, similar to past ones, again, kind of overview of the prioritized remaining targets. And again, we're gonna do that like 90 second overview and then three minutes on each activity. And then we'll do a choice breakout where you can pick any of those activities and do a deeper dive. And just to say it a couple of times, I'll just say the feedback, um, even from last meeting, please start with that student hat and then move to the teacher talk. So. Uh, and, and you're gonna, I mean, there's a lot going on. So there's, there's, there's need for, there's more than the time we have. There's need for both of those. So, um, but please do try starting with the student hat. And then uh, we'll come back in that last few minutes and really wanna give a little bit of time for reflection. And that also is helpful for us, but also just to, to honor that time that give you a little processing time and then put uh, both questions in the parking lot and, and verbal, and then uh, adjourn at five o'clock. And good, so I'll um, maybe use this to transition to, um, here's the, the overview. You'll find it under unit seven. That just seemed like, again, I wanna say this is not unit seven, but uh, that just seemed like the natural place to house it where people would go to look. And uh, again, so the overview, I would say that, you know, feedback's gonna be really key on these. These um, 
for instance, I will go ahead and dive in a little bit. So activities. So one of uh, an important activity that does live in unit seven is this performance expectation around explanations of the Big Bang. So um, one overarching comment though to say is about unit seven more, that would be not in the distance learning model, but important to set that up for when we are back in person is, you know, should unit seven have a strong storyline that really makes it fit together when people are having trouble getting to it or uh, something that we've piloted it and tried out in smaller pieces is, should that one have like two or three day chunks where if you have a two days before winter break and you don't wanna start the new unit or you're gonna be, uh, uh, one thought is to have it be, if you had you knew you're gonna be absent two days to have it be closer to asynchronous lesson. So this first one is close to that. It was really reduced. I mean, one of the things that we said that that hurt as a, I would say hurt me as an educator is that we really cut everything to be all business. Like this was not, lots of these, I want you to think of as launching points. There is more you could go with than what we put there. But with the tension that we felt all of them needed to be just two or three days, which means that, I mean, that performance expectation could be a semester long course. And so uh, that's it. So I'm gonna try to be a little quicker with the remaining ones. But uh, that first one is around constructing an explanation for the Big Bang. And that is more towards the asynchronous. We'll show that in the uh, three minute version of it. And then we have the use mathematical or computational representations to predict the motion of orbiting objects in the evidence statements. It really does um, talk about energy and Kepler's laws. But again, that's one that's utilizing that. And then there is that performance expectation. They really do want students to be aware of the inverse square law and how that comes up in both Newton's universal law of gravity and Coulomb's uh, law of electrical, electric force, electric force due to electrical interaction. And then the ones that we missed in unit three, uh, or sorry, unit four, Newton's laws really, you know, for us engineering a shoe, because the really the emphasis wasn't necessarily on Newton's laws, but there is the performance expectation around the second law of motion. So that one, you know, is a, obviously a big one for a physics course. And again, I'll say taking it down to three days and a little bit out of context does strip it of some of the context and the power, but it is one that I think a lot of people want to cover and we wanted to provide resources for it. And then also that last one, the mo uh, momentum, really conservation momentum and impulse. So just trying to kind of say everything that's there and now we'll just circle right back and you know, kind of more on the three minute range and I'll turn it over to Matt to talk about these first two. Yeah, so um, Go, starting with the the first one there, the what what is the evidence for for the Big Bang? This was a um, activity that was made by a, a Portland Metro STEM Partnership Council member, Scott Barentine, uh, and he's created it and used for his students um, as like a alternative project uh, during the year, and um, and just uh, I wanted to say with this and with all of the uh, lessons that we're uh, providing it. We hope we always hope for feedback on these. Um, so, uh, with this one, uh, this has been reduced a lot from uh, the original uh, intent of it. And Bradford, if you could click on the um, just the yeah the formative there, we it's been reduced to a uh, a go formative. And really, the idea is to construct an overall explanation for. Uh, the origin of the universe and we're giving um, lots of evidence behind that uh, uh, to, to do that. Um, Scott also made this uh, go formative or sorry these slideshows that are associated with uh, with that and the slideshows kind of follow um, 
by giving uh, some of the evidence that students couldn't come up with, for example, on cosmic background radiation or, and other things that um, uh, are providing with providing those resources uh, uh, to students to be able to um, watch and then giving them opportunities in the uh, go formative to to reflect on um, this uh, activity was designed and many of these activities were designed to be uh, synchronous that uh, students really do need feedback on this this is all uh, very um, uh, new information to them and so uh, while a conformative um, students can kind of work at their own pace but it also allows uh, teacher feedback and um, allows that that opportunity for for that. So really, we think for it to be successful, there needs to be uh, that give and take of uh, synchronous uh, time and work, student work time. Um, then with the second um, uh, target on the um, uh, agenda there is uh, related to around uh, orbital motion and um, uh, making some predictions about orbital motion. Um, because energy this year in distance learning was um, was taken off a little bit because of uh, our work, we, we cut our tradi more traditional energy unit and tied more of it into uh, unit six. We wanted another opportunity to come back to energy bar charts here. So uh, Bradford, if you could go into, yeah, that tab there. So um, we did start with um, this idea of the energy skate park. So uh, if when you look at the full scale activity, it starts with like a, a zoom out of uh, orbital motion. And then we want to get a, a sense of energy um, with energy uh, uh, bar charts if they haven't been done with your students. Uh, this is a, a new Desmos that we made. Um, to allow students to get some instant feedback about energy conservation. And, and so we zoom in on the FET uh, Energy Skate Park where they're looking at the interplay between gravitational kinetic energy um, and uh, uh, gravi sorry, gravitational energy and kinetic energy as it's moving back and forth. And this idea can, it, can be then transferred to orbital motion. So we're starting something more basic and then we're moving into orbital motion. Um, so we use this uh, FET uh, for orbital motion. Students will uh, interact with it in several ways. They'll make uh, stable orbit orbits around uh, the earth there with the satellite. Um, and then they'll start interacting with it a little bit more in terms of um, the energy that is associated with it. And Bradford, I think if you could go Yep, to slide nine there. Um, actually, go. can you go back one slide first and then... So um, they start with this idea of like dragging the dots where they think the largest gravitational potential energy is, um, and then the largest kinetic energy. And then they do um, something very similar to what, what they did with the uh, energy skate park, where now they have... Uh, on an orbital scale, scale, we can use energy to really describe what's going on with the motion of the satellite as it is as it is moving around uh, the Earth in that in that elliptical orbit. So when it's closest, it has the highest kinetic energy and lowest gravitational energy, and vice versa. And I think that's a pretty good synopsis of that. That leads really well into uh, the next activity that Bradford's going to present. Yeah, and if you end up doing um, these two in order, there's a lot of connection you could utilize. Um, but again, this activity to get it down to two days, it really was sort of all business uh, in terms of introducing in a data collection mechanism that is really data mining. So Halley's Comet, the only short period comet to be seen again and again and again by humans with the naked eye. Um, so it has some historical significance and the, the kind of the peak will just focus on there's slides that help introduce that. And then students are going to be given a data set that's sort of overwhelming, right? Data mining is a very important part of modern day science. And to keep it really short, I'll just say the one example that um, I, I share with students that they get a kick out of is um, 
is a lot of the times with medicines, uh, experimental trials, not related to COVID at all, um, but just other medicines, they oftentimes look during a trial and they look for Google searches. And I'll, the funny one is just, and, uh, yeah, maybe it's, I don't know, it's obviously a real issue, is that like uh, doc, people in medical trials won't tell them side, certain side effects. Like pe they just find them embarrassing, like if it makes your butt itch. And so they will, they would do Google searches on this. And lots of times there's only like 150 people in this trial and they search that medicine and butt itch or put in any other side effect. And then the doctors, they do this with a lot of them. And then the doc, they don't just say, oh, that's happening. Then they ask the doctors to ask the patient. And if the doctor brings it up and says, a lot of other patients are um, feeling this side effect. Are you experiencing that? They're like, yes. I didn't want to bring it up, but oh my God, yes. And so there's this data mining. So that's just that quick example. They data mine a set and I'll, I'll, I'll just jump right in. And so really this is meant to be like overwhelming. It's just a lot of numbers. There's big numbers. We just see this with the astronomy, right? And they're going into chemistry. So it is a good time to start bringing up and, and introducing that. But in any case, all they really need to do is figure out how does distance affect the force of gravity? So really all they need is distance and the force of gravity. And uh, when this is done with an Excel spreadsheet, we have them copy and paste it over into Desmos. But that's just one more step in the distance learning format that they're on. Now they're on a spreadsheet and they got to get back to Desmos. And it's not easy when you paste it into Desmos, it doesn't you know, it makes it generic like X2 and Y2. So we, in a sense, put the answer, we imported the data for them. So that no big deal, you can lock that screen and you can check which columns they're um, circling to just kind of make sure people are on the same page. And then really it's just, you know, back to our, you know, this is that new pattern inverse square. And, and so it's just, again, that, mix you know we do add a new pattern and that's also kind of nice to end the year on hey we've been working with these four patterns and they cover a lot but it's not everything it's not even close to everything so uh in any case and then there's just a card sort and i just want to show that it hopefully uh is not this is not hard hitting and um, the big things from the evidence statements are understanding that inverse square really is different than those the other ones and so in any case, I'll just quick, um, I don't want, I don't even know that this is, I might be close to the three minute mark. The A value is gonna depend on, yep. And this might be you structuring a little bit of um, classroom discussion on it, but I just wanna read this. Similar to blank pattern, doubling the input distance has a four times effect on the force of gravity. And this one, that's gonna be the hardest one form. We just want them to see it is kind of connected to quadratic, right? It does have that little two. It's squared, but it's on the bottom. So it does have this like four, you know, squaring effect, whoops. And then um, doubling the, uh, let's see, similar to the blank pattern, doubling the input decreases the output force. So we do want them to see that like inverse, when the input gets bigger, the output gets smaller and then almost by a process of elimination, but also the force, you know, here's our equation. Oh, that's supposed to say three cards. I'm, oh, no, it's not because that's, uh, this is the inverse square law and doubling the input makes the output times smaller. Yep, we want them to realize that's what's going on with the inverse square. And of course the constant and the A value, almost by a process of elimination, but hopefully some, maybe, maybe there's some, um, discussion somehow that they're like, of course, the strength of gravity depends on the mass of the objects, you know, that be, and then the strength of gravity, that's the gravitational constant, but we didn't feel the need to actually call out G. It's not in the evidence statements. And of course, launch point, if you want to, and you have that bandwidth and you have the time to give it. And of course, this could go farther. And a real fun one in our in-person is we then use this combined with the orbits activity to talk about dark matter that, and I'll say this super quick, because I, if I can get it 20 seconds, if you look at the, the orbits of stars inside of galaxies, of course, the, the mass that's inside of them, which should 
be related to the velocity they're going. And because there is missing mass, there's gravity that's keeping these stars in orbit, but it's not giving off any light that was named, this missing mass was named dark matter. Cause it, it's matter, cause it's exerting a gravitational force on these stars, keeping them in these unexpectedly tight orbits around the center of the galaxy. It's not giving off any light. And so dark matter. So it, that's a real fun one. And of course you could springboard to dark energy. That's not in the standards, but if you felt comfortable with it, I just want to say that this is a bare bones one so that it really fits in that two day time constraint. And then uh, cycling, uh, zooming back out. Oh, no, 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 this is me also. So then, uh, you know, Newton's second law, probably the most, you know, impactful equation in classical mechanics, you know, a little bit hard to shrink it down to just a couple days. Um, but we do, you know, that was sort of the constraint that we had for these activities. And so again, you might be in a situation where you can add back some of those days. I'll just, um, maybe I'll start with the FET. No surprise um, in the distance learning format where we did go, but you know, FET that would probably, is always part of an in-person learning experience with it. Um, and of course that just allows them to take data and we'll uh, show, this is the resource that we selected just to show that it does have continuity with it. It is, you know, this is just one page, right? So you're, um, we want to get across that this is doable in a, a just a couple days with these resources, but also know that uh, there are some wraparound resources. Whoops, sorry, I went too far. Um, just right here that you can see, I want to put that there is a goal formative activity that again, just allows that some of that check in kind of a pre assessment almost. And then I wouldn't quite call this one a post assessment, but it is checking on are they comfortable with the terminology around it? Um, the actual lab report itself, you know, you could expand it to a conclusion if you wanted that or another way of um, showing their understanding of the topics. And then I'll turn it over to Matt for this last one on momentum. Yeah, the last one on momentum is is really um, kind of a, a re, re envisioned model of um, something that we've done in class for several years now, looking at momentum and looking at several different um, videos associated with it. And um, we envision this more as an inter interactive lecture. If you have um, a day or two that you wanted to, to insert in, there, there are some references to rockets. So um, envisioning some of that could be tied into to space as well. Um, and Bradford, could you click into the that go formative activity. So um, if you're familiar with um, uh, some of the uh, things that we did in unit four around momentum, we, we've focused it around this um, slow motion video of uh, man uh, hit in the face with a, um, a filled up soccer ball. And we basically track the momentum change uh, through that. And as a, as a good, I'd say classical model of what the, what momentum is. Um, then we take that idea and expand on it and push it forward to some other situations. Um, and finally, the last situation, if you scroll all the way down, is, um, I just, you missed it there, uh, is, a, is a rocket. So that's a one. Sorry. yeah, yeah, sorry, is a rocket where um, they're looking at the momentum involved in a rocket um, uh, that conservation of momentum takes place, rocket's mass goes up and the fuel goes down, um, conserving momentum while still propelling the rocket. So uh, that's a, a kind of a take on that. Um, Bradford, if you go back to the, um, the calendar, uh, you can see, uh, I think if you refresh, it should be there in a second, if not, um, there is a, a link to some slides that are the kind of the native slides that we that we used. So yeah, the link to the uh, past teacher slides that are associated with that. So if that's something that you're interested in, you could look at those, uh, those teacher slides and um, use those to help you um, with that instruction. That is definitely one that is uh, intended to be kind of an interactive lecture that um, you're watching videos together with class, they 
they're thinking through, getting feedback, showing student work, um, uh, and uh, trying to um, use GoFormative in that aspect where we get this live feedback and we're able to um, uh, interact with students in that way and give them, and give them feedback there. And I'll uh, expand that and remember that the in-person resources are a resource for all of these. You know, you would go back and hunt for which learning target they're from. Um, so hopefully those are um, known to you as a resource to supplement. And then um, in a situation where they are gonna be more asynchronous. And I just wanna say that we, uh, and that just needs a little bit of support in that when we say synchronous, it doesn't necessarily mean, I mean, optimally it would be like the, the closer the feedback is, the more helpful and actionable that might keep a student. But this could be, you know, if you do need to, you're in a situation where you're only meeting twice a week or something, you might be in a situation where if you can, they need feedback, it doesn't necessarily have to be verbal feedback. So, you know, within Go Formative, you can um, have that back and forth as well. Okay, so the zooming even further out just to our overall agenda. I think we're, yep, we're doing good on pretty much right on time. And, you know, here in, we were guessing that people uh, from feedback we got last time and then just kind of the situations that we're hearing around the state is that, you know, you might, lots of people might have just time for one of these or two. So, and, but people might want to do different ones. We really, you know, space is kind of, um, just a, a different way, you know, it's a, it grabs different students that some of the other topics in the course might not have. So that one, but of course, you know, at a acceleration equals force over mass, so important. So people, we really thought we, we just didn't want to pick for you which activity you want to go on. So uh, in a minute, we'll, if you're, especially if you're familiar with Zoom, but if you're not, uh, we're going to, you will, we'll, and actually, I did learn that you do make you have to have the uh, newer Zoom to have this pop up. So we'll handle it for anyone that doesn't see it. But uh, shortly, there's going to be a window that pops up, and you are going to have to go onto the room. And on the little onto the right, it'll say join when you hover over it with a mouse. And so we're we're thinking that we want to keep the rooms just to like three to four, just to give people out a chance to. Uh, process. So some rooms we anticipated, you know, like Newton's second law might have more than three people that want to look at it or orbital motion or evidence for the Big Bang. So we made multiple rooms of it. So once a room has three people, start up the next room. And if it, uh, if you end up with a room where you're only by yourself, we're going to be monitoring that quick and we might move you back into a room uh, that has some people so that you don't get stranded there. So just want to let you know with that. Uh, before we send you off, we always want questions, and uh, I didn't check this time, but we're going to, yep, we see a couple questions here right now. Uh, we'll probably try to answer those right now, and then if you call us into a room, happy to join you, and then we'll just be here, though. So as you discuss this, please do start with that student hat. We do get that feedback. We know that you also need teacher talk, too, so um, uh, just say that the feedback from participants has been start with um, the student head on and look, but just as questions come up, uh, put them in right here and we'll try to answer them kind of in real time even. So kind of maybe you want to have this portion pulled up if you have multiple tabs open, this and the activity, and then uh, we'll try to get you feedback that you are asking. Uh, I think we're getting close and I'll just turn yeah. it back to Matt to just check in on if I missed anything. Yeah, so uh, with that, I'm going to open up rooms here in just a moment. Um, decide which of the resources that you want to uh, look at. And I labeled on my, on, on my Zoom, I had to expand the window and I'll open it right now. Um, you should be able to see, I think if you uh, down at the bottom of Zoom, I believe it should say um, breakout rooms. Are you seeing that, Bradford? I can't see it since I'm the host. I do not see it. Let's see, maybe under. Oh, maybe should I? I I'm going to stop screen sharing for this moment. Okay. Oh, and I will say also the other feedback that we got that seemed to work well for people is if one person's willing to share their screen inside, and I was just trying to check that we've enabled them to be able to do that, is if you share your screen, one person, then it's, yeah, I, 
I guess it's not a joke, it's literal that you would be on the same page then. So that way it just kind of ensures that you're talking about one thing and someone else is talking about another and you don't realize it. So if uh, someone could kind of agree to do that, I, oh, I'm gonna click on breakout. Oh, I see it. I had to click on breakout rooms. No, I did need to click on breakout rooms and now I see it. Yeah, so it's down at the, it should be down at the bottom there uh, where it says breakout rooms. Um, next to it, I see people are, are kind of choosing to join in there. Um, next to those rooms, there uh, is a number. You will have to click the blue number that says join. It'll and, turn to join once you hover over it. It'll say join once you hover over it. And um, you can find the room that you want to go to and uh, join another person who, who might be there. All right, well, welcome back everyone. Sorry about that uh, whiplash if you were in the middle of a conversation there. Um, uh, just wanted to say any ex additional questions can still go into the top of the idea capture tool. We answered two of those there while, while you were in breakout rooms. Uh, we do ask you to go um, to complete um, numbers five and six in the idea capture tool, just using that space to Think about the level of scaffolding that you might, uh, uh, your students might need. And then uh, just what was a one sentence sum summary or takeaway uh, from the webinar today. So we'll give you just a little bit of time to do that, answering that on, on yours. And um, we'll kind of come back together for uh, some live questions here in a minute or two. Give you about one more minute and then just see what live questions come up before we adjourn. Right. Yeah, we'd like to um, just open this up to questions. One one thing that I saw, I was uh, looking through the idea capture tool, um, was um, that a number of people were just noting that uh, the materials provided here were really it, like kind of pick and choose for you uh, and your students. I would I would not claim that this is um, our unit seven. It's um, really those prioritized learning targets um, that are there. And um, definitely in person is uh, a lot uh, more in depth there. So um, do we wanna open it up to other questions that people might have um, before we adjourn here? Great. Well, then um, I think we'll, we'll stay on, but I, we just do the bring some closure. We'll do a countdown three, two, one. But sometimes we just, you, you know, just there's a case where people want to ask a question in the more close setting. So I think we'll move to that. But if you're if you're good, 
Um, thank you for coming. And if you're willing to just unmute and um, say bye, it's really just always nice to hear some voices. So uh, three, two, one. Bye. 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 Thank you. Very much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Well, thanks, Bradford.